Okay, just so everybody knows we are actively recording. Um, if you have joined us to um, hear the item about the 1443 East Kensington Avenue appeal, that item has been withdrawn by the applicant um, and we will not be hearing that item tonight. Uh, we will be hearing the appeal of the Historic Landmark Commission decision at approximately 1345 East Normandy Circle. Uh, H. Jones, can is there a question I can answer for you? You're able to mute and unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, I was just wondering, uh, is there an explanation for why that particular case was canceled? Uh, the applicant uh, withdrew the application and that's the only information I have. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I called... Mike and I got voicemail. I left a voicemail, but I see Jake Hinkins there. So maybe Jake is in the attendees list. I'll move over to panelist. Hey guys. Hello there. And I've got Mike here with me. Okay, great. Um, then we're good. We can go ahead and proceed. Great, thank you very much. My name is uh, Matt Worthland. I'm an appeals hearing officer for Salt Lake City. Uh, tonight uh, on our agenda, as was uh, uh, previously announced, but just wanna mention that the uh, appeal first on the agenda regarding property of 1443 East Kensington Avenue has been withdrawn by the applicant. And so that public hearing will, will not uh, take place uh, uh, tonight. And the, the matter now before us is uh, the appeal of uh, a historic landmark commission decision regarding property at 1345 East Normandy Circle. And this matter is not a public hearing. Uh, uh, and so because it's an administrative uh, decision and the appeal of that decision at the historic landmark commission this is a matter that uh, uh, where uh, a public hearing is not required since uh, the appeals uh, hearing officer makes a decision uh, based on those applicable standards and the correctness of the decision. And therefore, it's based on the record uh, already uh, provided at the Historic Landmarks Commission decision. This is an appeal to the property owner, Michael Young, and I understand he's uh, here represented by counsel. And... Uh, so what we'll do, uh, if, if we can, um, I've uh, read uh, all of the material in the staff report, so you can sort of make that assumption uh, as we discuss things, but uh, I'm not a, uh, opposed to you, again, pointing things out or reminding me or emphasizing whatever uh, things you, you, you think are important. Um, and so I'd first like to hear from the, the, the appellant, uh, and the representative uh, first, and then I'll uh, sit, give the city a chance to to respond, and then I'll come back and give uh, the appellant uh, the final opportunity to respond and provide any response to that. And we'll we'll kind of go to that point. Uh, so, um, Jake, if you want to take it away, thank you very much, Mr. Worthland. I appreciate that. Um, so. It, we're here on a couple of, of different points here. I, I know that my client submitted his own appeal on this and a lot of the points that he was raising in are in relation to due process. I, I have read, and it sounds like you have as well, uh, Mr. Nelson's response to that. And I, I wanna just address a couple of those points because I think it's important for us to understand. I, I think there are due process violations and I'll go through a couple of those points. And if you've read them, I'm not going to elaborate much on those things. But I think it's also important to recognize that because this court, and I apologize if I just keep calling it court, that's going to be a bad habit for me. But if if you are if you are reviewing this, yeah, you, you give me way too much credit. Uh, <laughs> that, but, uh, and it, I, I have the same problem when I'm doing bench trials because I do a fair amount of jury trials that I'm constantly asking for permission to approach and things like that, <laughs> that start to annoy people. So I apologize no, in advance. 
kind of stuff. If you call me your honor, I'll then I'll have a real problem. But uh, so go ahead. So I and how how should I address you, Mr. Worthland? Is that all right, Mr. Worthland? That's fine. Most everybody calls me Matt, and I so I'm fine with either way. Whatever you're comfortable with, I'm comfortable with. But. I, I, I'm fine to call you Matt. I just didn't okay. want to be too informal here, and I realize yeah. it's a fairly informal setting. But yeah, no, you're fine. So I I will I'll first take those in turn and just kind of talk briefly about some of the due process concerns and why I think that's important. But I do actually want to address some of the substantive elements that were addressed. And I think Mr. Nelson addressed those as well, although he spent a fair amount of time on the due process and why that may not matter. So in this situation, I think we have to look at how we got here. And this is a situation where my my client, first of all, didn't understand completely the, the ramifications of living in a historical district. Um, I, I don't think it can be lost on anyone that there really weren't a lot of notice given. I understand the committee's position and Mr. Nelson's position that he lives in this historic district and that's his burden to, to shoulder that. I don't think that that's true. I think that um, the historic district has an opportunity and an obligation through the city to provide that type of notice. And I think they've recognized that by the fact that now they are sending out notice on an annual basis. They hadn't done that. And if you look at the emails that had been provided, and I think they were included in the report, it, it's pretty clear that there were two total notices, one that happened before this, that happened about a year before this incident, and then one that happened essentially the day of the hearing uh, my client received that. The reason that that's important is my client then had an opportunity, if he had known about some of these things, to, to go and research and find out exactly what the committee was going to be looking at and the, the things that were going to be of interest. So with, with that backdrop, this isn't a situation where my client came in and wanted just to renovate this property. He wanted to change a bunch of things that were of historical significance. This was a flood. My client was had this thrust upon him. This was an emergency situation that required really quick and um, movement. And as a result of that, my client did what he thought was in the best interest of his home and the neighborhood. And so he, he in looking at the houses to the side of him. And I think that's one of the things that's really important from a substantive standpoint is the two houses to the side have straight walkways to the street. They um, they don't have the curving walkways. I know that the city has pointed out that one of the um, properties is a non-conforming property. And I always just find that interesting that we're going to exempt out the ones that don't fit the mold and then we're going to say, oh, but all of these things have to have this really important characteristic, but except for the ones that we exempt out. And what we're saying is we're not trying to change the historical significance of these different characteristics. We're saying we did this in the best way that we could in a way that made sense and looked just like the two properties that sit on either side of my client's um, home. And so from a substantive perspective on the walkway, I think that's pretty good argument to say not that, hey, there are two of two that have straight walkways and um, three that don't. It really ends up being there are three that have straight walkways now and three that don't. And so I don't think that that's a characteristic that, at least in the past, is um, something that the committee has has looked at as being important. And I think this is where it becomes arbitrary and capricious, where we're treating Mr. Young differently than the way that we've treated folks in the past. And that's a problem. And so I think that it's important for, I almost just did call you, I almost called you your honor, Matt. So I <laughs> I think it's important for you to, to take that into, into account. The reason then going back to um, where I started with the due process issues, the way that the evidence was presented to the committee previously, I think does have an effect. There, there's a reason why um, we have a process and a specific protocol and when evidence is going to be shared and when it's not going to be shared. And one of the key points I think that's important, because this was a 4-3 decision, this is, this is not a 7-0 decision, this isn't a 6-1 decision, this is a 4-3 decision. And so these type of changes, if they were done differently, could have had a difference. 
right? They could have made a difference. And we'll never know because my client didn't get that opportunity. He didn't, it wasn't done correctly. The, the one letter that was supposedly um, provided in his behalf wasn't read. It was just shared that there was something that was in the record, but I, that's always a little bit of a concern that everyone will go back and if they would review the record in total, because this isn't a short record, there, there's a lot of information here. And so there, there's a concern when we violate someone's due process and if protocol isn't followed, that the outcome could have been different. And at this point, the only way for us to know that is either to have a new hearing or you know, for for you, Matt, to to look at this essentially de novo and say, is, are they following their own rules and regulations, or is this arbitrary and capricious type of um, overlay that is resulting in my client then having to do something different than the folks next to him have had to do in the past? When again, I I don't think it can be lost on you that this wasn't something that he wanted to do just because he wanted to do it. It was something that he had to do because of an emergency situation. So that, that I think deals with the, the sidewalk piece of it. I think the other piece that's really interesting to me is over and over, we talk about these two steps, but then when the committee's talking about them, as far as having the significance and why it's important not to destroy them, they characterize them as a porch in no way can these two steps be a porch. And I think I think we can just go to the definition of that. In Merriam-Webster, the porch, a porch is a covered area joining an entrance to a building and usually having a separate roof. This has none of those aspects. This is not a porch. This is two steps. And I, I think it's also important to recognize that in that community, there are a number of buildings that have concrete steps. I think that's actually one of the things they they don't actually take issue with the shape of the steps, but they do take issue with the them not being brick anymore. And I, I can understand that, but I can also appreciate the fact that there are a number of other homes in that neighborhood that all have concrete as the, the steps. And I think it's also important to recognize that th this isn't a porch because I think if we are talking about a porch, there is a lot more design characteristic that's important for a porch versus steps. And as I went through and I, I tried to look through all of these regulations for this historic district, the, there certainly are a number of situations where it talks about with a porch, that needing to be in conformity and needing to have the same structure and elements. But for steps, I don't see that that is, that those same regulations apply. And so, I think it's important to, to look at the, the actual regulations, 21A3420 in subsection G8. When we talk about this, it says the contemporary design for alterations and additions to existing properties shall not be discouraged when such alterations and additions do not destroy significant cultural, historical, architectural, or archeological material. Such des and such design is compatible with the size there's been no objection as to the size, the scale, color, we have, and then material and character of the property. But the next clause, I think, is what's important with that, because it's not just of the home, it's of the neighborhood or environment. And so, you know, Matt, as you look at this, and in total, what we're really saying is we don't want this being done in an arbitrary and capricious manner, and I think it was. I think that if we look at how we got here, I think that's important. But um, most importantly, it, it is in conformity with the other properties in the neighborhood, specifically the two homes right next to Mr. Young's home. Um, we, we do have, and I know that this is not the, the typical pattern, but I just received this, um, that there are Mr. Young had gone around to all the neighbors in the neighborhood talking about and wanting to see if they had issue um, because he wants to be a good neighbor. I mean, this isn't this isn't just about about trying to make sure that he doesn't have to change or doesn't have to do things. If if everyone in the neighborhood just hated what he did, Mike's going to be the type of guy that comes in and says, nah, fine, let's let's fix it. I don't I don't want to have upset amongst my neighbors. Um, 
And so he went door to door and talked to everybody in that neighborhood. And what we have is everyone but two of the neighbors signing. So eight of the 10 signing saying that they feel like what he did is in conformity and what he did doesn't change the, the aspects of the neighborhood that are important, this historical neighborhood. Um, and I, I'm happy to, I don't know the best way to actually get that to you. And I frankly recognize if you can't take it new evidence, because I realize this is something now that came up. I, I could argue some of these issues as far as them, the importance and the timeliness of this, given the fact that we just got these signatures, but, um, I'll leave that to you, Matt. You tell me if you want to see that. Yeah, or... no, I, um, I, I appreciate uh, you bringing that up, but I, I, I'm not allowed to take on any additional. I have to go on what's what's in the record already. Um, and, and so, I, I, but I don't blame you for trying. <laughs> you can't you can't get what you don't ask for, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to quickly look at my notes here, if I could, Matt. Well, I guess yeah, if while you have doing questions, it. I'd be happy to. Yeah, to I did. Just, yeah, just a couple of couple of questions. Sure. One one that's more out of curiosity. Help help me understand the the emergency situation that was um, just just generally. So I just want to understand how a walkway becomes an emergency. Yeah. Let, I'll, I'll let Mike just go ahead and speak on that. Yeah, yeah. Great. the home Thanks, is 98 man. years old and we had a water main break. It just sprung a leak, oh, yeah. was old and rotting. Um, it started flooding the basement and next thing we knew, and I, I presented uh, photographs to the commission at the time, but the whole front yard got destroyed in the process of getting that water main replaced and also a sewer main that was also in need of uh re replacement as well because it's again 90 plus years old lovely so yeah that, no that that makes, that's, that's, that's the emergency sense. that sprung this on us yeah no i i i totally i totally get that um jake let me see if i um uh, any other questions based on Okay, no, that's 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 all. I don't think I have any more uh, questions at this point. Um, uh, oh, oh, the question was this: you, you said that they didn't take issue with the shape, but more the material. It seemed like they did mention that instead of them being round, that they were rectangular. Uh, but but I may be mistaken that that no. I think that was that from the historic commission or was that somebody else? I, I can remember no it was from the historic commission as i as i read that so i was looking at when they went through and they had the pieces they had the the two different columns right conformity non-conformity they 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 absolutely are different shapes right than what they used to be i think what they were addressing is the that type of shape is not it, it's still within the type of shape and structure that would fit within this historic district yeah. gotcha. it, but it wasn't the same as it was before right okay makes sense okay well uh jake anything else for or mike uh, from Nothing your standpoint for me right now. Mike, did you, have... you know there's this a case of a missing email i guess i know there was another email that was in support of me it was sent into the, the staffer um in the hearing, the the commissioner, the lead commissioner, made made mention of two emails on record. There's not a second email that was included in the report that you guys have uh, provided here today. Um, and I've just I've never seen this second email in support of my argument here. I'm just, I'm just and, and yeah, maybe we can why why and why it has not been shared with. Um, everybody here and we can ask the uh uh the city of the you know to to respond to that or address that issue as well because if if in fact there was something submitted but it never made it in the record that should have been in the record something like that we can bring in after the fact and i'm fine to allow it if if we can track down the rogue email um, 
Sounds Unless like you it. have anything else, then I'll uh, turn the time over to the city. Uh, I don't know if it's Mayar or Mr. Nelson. Uh, maybe I can call you Paul. I, I, I don't want to offend you either, <laughs> Mr. Nelson. But uh, you can call or, me whatever you want. Okay. okay. So anyway, first of all, ahead. first of all, let me say that for about the last uh, week and a half, um, I've been hearing complaints from my one child who still lives at home that dad we need a new router so if i freeze up and uh, let me know that i'd stop oh wow on cue Looking for a minute that was perfectly on cue there it is <laughs> right 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 there it goes <laughs> it's on my to-do list trust me um so if if i freeze and i stop saying so just tell me hey he froze up Tell us what you were trying to say. Um, that was fantastic timing, yeah. Uh, as, let me just say, as far as the the email thing, and maybe Mayara can clean that up or, or, or clarify that. Um, what happened at the meeting was that uh, in Mayara's presentation, she indicated that uh, there were two emails that came in after her staff report was published. So as a, as a typical practice, staff will um, include all of the emails that we got with respect to that project. Uh, there were two emails that apparently came in after the fact that did get deposited into the commissioner's Dropbox folders. So they had access to that and presumably read those emails. Um, Mayara read the content of a phone call that she received after the fact, because that's something that's maybe easier to, to, uh, to say out loud than to try to transcribe and then throw into the Dropbox. Um, and so there really was, wasn't an issue of like something being excluded. Now, I think that you're correct that we didn't include those in the appeal packet. And I think we can, we can rectify that those two additional emails, um, can yeah, be right and probably should have been, and that's that's on us. Yeah, if uh, you would, that would be great. Just certain, certainly, certainly. Um, the I think we we addressed the due process issues. Really, the only thing that I think Mr. Hinkins said that that I want to address is when he said the city really should have provided additional notice. I pointed out um, in in my brief, and this is Mr. Uh, Young noted. Uh, at, at the hearing, um, he was aware that he lived, that he lives in a historic district. And just to reiterate what's in my brief, the law says that when we adopt and publish an ordinance in accordance with the requirements of section 103711, we've done what we're supposed to. We've put the community, the world, whomever on notice. Um, As far as um, I guess anything outside of due process, uh, I would just point out that in uh, Mr. Young's own presentation, he stated, I'm here to ask for forgiveness. Um, the role of the hearing officer here is to determine whether the commission made some kind of an error. And we usually measure that against the arbitrary and capricious or illegal standards that the courts use. Um, and when an applicant acknowledges that they're there to ask for forgiveness, that's a pretty clear signal that they didn't meet the requirements, uh, the standards that are in the code. Um, and that's, that's really, that's all I've got. Um, we've, I think we've, we've exhausted, uh, the arguments and the brief on, on due process and here uh, and we really the, what the role of the hearing officer uh, is in this proceeding is to determine whether the landmark commission made a mistake and I just I'm not hearing anything uh, certainly it's up to you Mr. Worthland to determine whether um, some evidence has been presented that the landmark commission made a mistake but I think that's really hard to find when the appellant himself says I'm here to ask for forgiveness. That's all I got. So, Mr. Nelson, let me uh, let me ask you uh, a, a question. One of the things that um, Jake brought up was um, 
you know, look, he was just looking to uh, both houses on each of the to, to each of his uh, anyways neighbors to the to either side of him uh, that they both have straight walkways. Uh, how does the city? What am I supposed to do with that kind of uh, information? Uh, is that um, you know, what would, anyway, I don't want to put words in the city's mouth, but, uh, right. just how, how would you, um, characterize that kind of an argument? I mean, if you, if you find that there's an error in that assessment, uh, you know, you certainly could, um, could in, make that your part of your opinion and remand it to the landmark commission. But, um, just to reiterate what, and, my R is here and she can uh, spell it out better uh, than I could. But in her presentation and the staff report, she indicated that the house, I'm going to say it's on the east side, um, is not a contributing property. So when the uh, Normandy Circle Local Historic District was created, all of the properties within that district, except for that one, were classified as contributing structures. And the property... And I think, again, correct my directions, I believe it's the property to the west. Um, it has a curved feature. Uh, so it's, it's not just one walkway to the front door. It's a walkway and then a curved pathway uh, around the side of the house. That was the, the curvature um, that was noted in uh, the staff report. Um, and, you know, I... I get it. It's it's something that uh, is it's a difficult assessment because one of those properties doesn't uh, doesn't fit the mold because it's not a, a contributing structure. But what was noted was that these um, these yard features are a significant part of this particular uh, historic district, and if you look at all of the other properties in that local historic district, they all have some uh, meandering feature to the walkway. Yeah, so I mean, it sounds like what the city's saying is that that's not, that's not the standard of how to make these decisions is you don't just look at what your neighbors have done necessarily. And, and Mr. Young probably wasn't aware at the time that one of the, one of the properties wasn't a contributing structure anyway. And so by nature, you can't look to a non-contributing structure for any guidance on what you can do. Um, let me let me just let me just say, and this is totally irrelevant. As somebody who had to replace a water line and a sewer line within a three period three year period on a house that's much younger than ninety something years old, um, uh, I feel the pain, right? And yeah. and I understand that that's what precipitated this, and that's uh, that's definitely a challenge. Um, just wanted to add to Paul's. Um, assessment of the contributing non-contributing the 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 contributing follows one uh set of guidelines set of standards and the non-contributing follows another we don't have control over the non-contributing property and telling them the standards that we apply for contributing buildings so we wouldn't have the ability to tell them they couldn't have a straight walkway or make it meandering. So we don't have ability to maintain the same characteristics of the districts on a non-contributing non, uh, non property. We do for contributing, and that's why we want to maintain the pattern that was, ex that was historic and part of the district. So basically you're saying Mr. Young bought the wrong property. If he had bought the other property and had the issue, we wouldn't be here tonight. Right. But two, the property next door isn't as beautiful of a home as what he bought to, to, to be true, you know, real, and which is why it's a non-contributing structure. So anyway, here here we are. Um, good. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nielsen. My art doesn't sound like we have anything else from the, from the city. Uh, I'll uh, pass, pass the baton back to Jake and Mike to see... Uh, uh, if they have any any response to city or any final uh, words uh, for me. Yeah, just briefly, I appreciate that, Matt. And I appreciate um, the everything that's been been said about this. I I think 
it's important to look at the at, at the cul-de-sac, right? Because if you look at the neighborhood as a whole, I I you could find more than a dozen in that neighborhood, and I realized that they're not all part of the historic society, but they absolutely look very similar, right? And so if we're looking at this, one of the things that that the um from a design aspect that we're supposed to be looking at is how does it mesh, right? How does it how does it fit with the rest of the community? And if we look at page seven of the report, in fact, can I just share that? It looks like I can. Perfect. So let me see if I can do this right. Can you all see that okay? Yep, I can see it just fine. And I'm I've got my printed out copy as well. Okay. Um, so I'll look at that as well. Yep. I, I think, you know, and this is what Paul was just referencing. The one, the one to the west, the main walkway to the road, and that's what that's exactly what I was talking about, is a straight shot. There is a pathway that shoots off from that that then wraps around to the house. We don't dispute that. But the main walkway goes straight. 1347 goes straight. Mike's now goes straight. So what you have is you have three of six of the homes in that cul-de-sac that if we're coming in and we're driving in people, part of the reason that we have these historic districts is as people are coming into these districts and as they're looking at these historic areas, they want to be able to have this ambiance, this feel of what things looked like back when. And if we're just saying, hey, we're we're excluding out 1347, okay, I understand that if they weren't part of this to begin with, but that doesn't change. The people who are coming in surely don't know that. They're coming in and they're seeing what they're seeing is what they're seeing, right? And what they're going to see then is everyone at the end of that cul-de-sac has a straight shot drive or a straight shot sidewalk. The ones on the side don't. And they're not substantial meandering. These are not big windy curvy paths they're mostly straight but they do have a curve to them that's a big difference right if we're talking about all cobblestone paths that wind around and things like that that's different than if we have half of them now that have straight shot sidewalks i think that that's important when we're looking at the the nature and character of of what we're talking about here which is this preservation of a historic district the preservation of, of what it is that we're we're trying to preserve and and he does that right and again i'll go back and what paul said is exactly right it, this was a mess and they're trying you know as as a family to try to really quickly do this in a way that looks like everyone else and you're absolutely correct matt in the the sense that my client didn't know the rules and regulations he he did what i think most normal folks would do in that situation is they look around to the neighborhood and they say i want this to look like everyone else's stuff and they do it that way right you don't want to be the bright orange house in the midst of a bunch of brick homes and he wasn't trying to do something that was out of character he was trying to keep it within the character but he was just trying to do what what made sense based on what he had in front of him Yes. Um, regarding the, the comment of asking for forgiveness, I, I wasn't admitting that I'd done anything um, nefarious here. My my asking forgiveness was just really just a way of apologizing to the committee that I'd gone about this beforehand and not gone through the proper channels, uh, which clearly is why we're we're here today and where we've gone through this the proceedings we have. Um, and then regarding uh, Mr. Nelson's comments uh, with the city and uh, doing the bare minimum to uh, give homeowners notice by simply stating we're in a historic district, um, you know, we're, we're dealing with the Historic Preservation Society or Commission. And to me, if their mission is about preservation, they should be doing more to notify new homeowners of uh, their regulations and their mission and their, their existence. Uh, I've lived in the home for seven years and prior to this all happening, I'd received one small postcard that was showed at the, the uh, hearing before, easily thrown away, can easily be tossed in the garbage. 
if we're trying to prevent problems like this from happening, as like I suggested in the hearing, a formal notice to new homeowners, I think is is to be expected to prevent problems like this to happen from happening. Otherwise, what's what's going to stop a new homeowner in a historic district from coming in and maybe painting their brick house stark white because no one's given them any notice about the regulations? That's something that can't be undone. And I I feel like the city and the Historic Landmark Commission need to be doing more to put us on notice. Great, thank you. With that, we'll submit. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, give, given that I'm still waiting just for the couple of emails, let me get those from the city. I'll take this under advisement. And... Matt, I did send those over to you. You'll have access to them now. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. I'll take this under advisement and issue my uh, opinion in the coming days. And uh, again, thank you, everyone, city staff, appellant, representative. We appreciate uh, your your time and efforts uh, tonight, and uh, give me lots to lots to think about. Hey, Aubrey Thanks. and Myra, can we make sure that the um, appellant and his attorney get those emails as well? I can send them over. Thank you, Matt. All I appreciate thank it. You. Jake. Thanks, Michael, guys. Everybody, thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, have everyone. Have a good night. Thank Bye. you. Have a good night. Sure.